the premier historian of Wyoming has said that uh, the Johnson County was the most uh, war was the most notorious event that ever occurred, and and I, I don't know that anybody would really deny that. Johnson but, County, Wyoming, is uh, located north of Natrona County, which is where Casper is. It's about 115 miles north of Casper, about uh, 300 miles north of Cheyenne. Uh, it was the first settlement in in uh, northern Wyoming. Uh, and it was very early settled by large cattlemen, large corporations, uh, in the southern part of the county. And then in the northern part of the county, there were individuals. At a very early time, the big cattlemen insisted that they were being robbed blind, uh, with very little evidence to support it. The northern part of the state had been cut off uh, from the southern part of the state in the sense that it, it was uh, the northeast quadrant, all of that stuff over there, uh, was uh, unceded Indian territory. It had been set aside for Indian tribes for hunting. Uh, and it in turn shut off the rest of the northern part of the state, the area to the northwest uh, called the Bighorn Basin. And uh, men weren't able to get in there. After the Custer battle, all of that was shifted around. Uh, and all of that became open. And what happened is that there was a huge rush by entrepreneurs. Uh, to get in there and, and grab uh, all that grazing land, that, that rich grazing land, uh, when, when you put cattle on them. And, and it was all open land. Uh, not a, not a, a bit of it uh, was owned by private individuals. So these huge uh, outfits would go in there and just seize it. Uh, they'd seize 100,000 acres and start fighting people to keep away from it. And so what grew up is a culture of, uh, of uh, independent domains in, in which uh, they, they said, buy violence, we're going to prevent homesteaders from coming in, we're going to stop anybody from taking our lands away from them. Well, they weren't, they were, they were public lands. Uh, and it was a time of the, of the country in which there was a, uh, what I want to say, uh, on the part of the entrepreneur class, there was a real feeling of power. Uh, as you recall, there was enormous uh, uh, agitation between labor and union during, uh, labor and capital during that time. And, and as part of that, these people almost felt they had a right to control their little domains. Uh, and uh, it was only gonna go so far in democratic America. Well, the Johnson County War really didn't have a defined time. Uh, I define it as a series of murderous events that started on the 1st of November of 1891 when two men were attacked, almost killed, in a cabin. Two men were killed on the 1st of December of 1891. And in April of 1892, 52 men came north from Cheyenne uh, and attacked Johnson County an enormous amount of dispute as to exactly why these people came north. What they said uh, was happening in, in Johnson County was that, that the small cattlemen were stealing from them all the time. They were wrestling. Uh, that, that was a uh, euphemism or uh, another word for thieving. Uh, and uh, they were insisting that because of that, uh, they must take strong action to, to force cattle convictions. But what the people of the northern part of the state perceived is that the true agenda here was to force these people off the land because these big cattlemen had come onto the public domain. It was all free land. Uh, and they, they run their cattle on it and made a lot of money because they got the free land. But the, the uh, land laws were still in effect, uh, which meant that any homesteader could come onto a stream and get his 160 acres, uh, which in turn took away the most valuable land away from the cattlemen. Uh, and there were instances of that where a whole stream was taken away uh, from a big cattle uh, operation and, and completely ruined the area. This is an area, uh, as you no doubt know, uh, is extremely dry except for certain large streams that come out of, of big mountains. If you take those streams away, you can't run cattle. One of the uh, ugly things about this, the Johnson County raid, is that their objective was to go up there and kill all the county commissioners, the heads of the county, kill the sheriff, kill other people in there, and replace them with, with uh, people uh, who were more to their liking. The uh, governor of the state was a man named Amos Barber, who was a medical doctor, and he was very close to the cattlemen, who were headquartered primarily in Cheyenne. Uh, and he, he was personal friends with all of them, to the point that when these people came riding up north from uh, first from Cheyenne, actually it was railroad train to Casper, and then they rode them horses north of that, they had cover that was given to them by the governor of the state of Wyoming. He had gone so far as to wire the, the uh, heads of the local militia and tell them, do not follow the instructions of the local sheriff, so that when the invasion actually happened, the sheriff of Johnson County went to the head of the militia and said, I need help. 
And the, and the man said, I can't do it. Here's the, the wire from the governor of the state of, of Wyoming. A lot of furor about that much later. About April 5th of 1892, uh, they came up to Casper, uh, and the far side of Casper uh, got off the train and, and got their horses and, and started riding north. Their objective was to ride to southern Johnson County in a day. They ran into horrific weather and it took them a couple days. And when they arrived there, they discovered uh, that one of their primary targets, a, a so-called wrestler named Nate Champion, was in a cabin only a little further north. Well, Nate Champion was the man they attacked in October, rather, it was October 31st, November 1st of, of 1891. They had not been successful. Instead, he had shot back at them and killed one and, and injured another and become the prime witness in a case of attempted murder against them. So they wanted to kill him because he was the primary witness against them, against criminal charges that were brought in Johnson County and being vigorously pursued against the leaders of the assassination squad who were the big shots in the Wyoming Stock Wars Association uh, on, uh, I believe it was the 9th of uh, uh, April of 1892, they besieged this cabin. And the idea is they were quickly going to kill these men and then get up there to Buffalo and kill the rest of the men. The only problem is, is that Nate Champion was one heck of a fighter and a very tough guy. And for something like eight hours, he held them off, blazed away. There were 50 men around uh, this cabin blazing away at them. And by three o'clock, the count was three wounded on the part of the 50 men, not a touch on, on the part of Nate Champion. And the significance of that is that the people of the area figured out what was going on. But, but uh, Nate Champion, what finally happened there is they got a wagon, the big cattleman got a wagon, pushed it into the cabin, started it burning, forced Nate Champion out, and they gunned him down then. But his time, his fight had given them time because way early, some of the local neighbors there had come, heard all the firing and come and looked over a ridge and they saw all that happening. And given a lot of furor in newspapers in which the big cattlemen were threatening to come up and kill people, they knew what was going on. They rode immediately to Buffalo and alerted the sheriff. And then what happened is that uh, uh, after the cattlemen finished they, uh, at the cabin, they started moving north. But uh, by then the, company, the country was completely aroused. Men uh, who were pretty tough frontier men grabbed their rifles and came charging after these, these guys. And it finally culminated in a, in a place called the, the T.A. Ranch, in which 45 of the cattlemen, that they were down to that at that point, were holed up. And a huge posse was surrounding them, got to over 400 men, and started shooting away at them like crazy. And was, in fact, was closing in on them. And they'd reached a point where they built this incredible device called a, an Ark of Safety, or a go-devil. And the idea is they were going to push this down a hill and use TNT that they captured from the cattlemen to throw into the fortifications, force them out, and 400 guns would start shooting at them. Uh, and just about that time, lo and behold, the United States Cavalry showed up and rescued these men. What had happened is that Amos Barber, again, remember the governor of the state of Wyoming, had finally figured out that these men were in trouble. At first, he had denied anything that was going on. He did everything he could to give him a clear killing field, but it backfired on them when, when the country became aroused and suddenly they were trapped and in deep trouble. They weren't gonna give up. And, and the, uh, you, you can bet that those, those settlers at that time were gonna take them in one way or another. If they had to, had to shoot them to do it, they were gonna do it. But just as they were closing in, the cavalry showed up because when Amos Barber figured out they were in trouble, he immediately wired back to President Benjamin Harrison and said, there's an insurrection in the state of Wyoming. Well, there wasn't an insurrection. There were some lawbreakers who were then surrounded by lawfully constituted authorities, but that's not the way he worded it. He said that, that, that the insurrection has to be stopped and, and uh, bloodshed has to be prevented. In other words, uh, his friends could, could not be hurt in any way. Uh, and so uh, then what happened is that they couldn't get a hold of the president, so they wired to the two Wyoming senators who coincidentally, were big shots in the Wyoming Stock Growers Association. One had just been the president of it. They had huge cattle uh, holdings. Uh, they went to the White House, pulled Benjamin Harrison out of bed, and told him, there's an insurrection going on. You've got to prevent this bloodshed. Well, there was nobody from Johnson County to tell him otherwise, so a telegram went out to the, the, uh, the post. It was called Fort McKinney. It was next to Buffalo. They got on the, the, the uh, horses uh, in the middle of the night, started riding, and showed up about 7 o'clock. They rescued all these cattlemen, took them back up to Fort McKinney, and there held them. What happened then is that the governor of Wyoming, through some kind of crazy arrangement, 
gained control of these men. And he refused to let any of the Johnson County authorities to even interview them for the criminal cases. He completely undercut their criminal uh, charges. Then he moved all the men down to Cheyenne and gave them complete freedom. They could run, they could run and do whatever they wanted to do. Well, in the meantime, Johnson County is doing absolutely everything it can to bring charges, and they're being thwarted in every way. Uh, and through manipulations, essentially, the governor and of an excellent uh, attorney on the part of the, uh, the cattlemen, they finally reached a point where they all had to be put out on bond, and, and the trial was set off to January of 93, which was significant because the people of Wyoming, after all this happened, were outraged. You can imagine the people uh, were going to vote to throw out all the office holders, and the office holders had been clearly identified when all the Republicans, uh, Gar Barber was a Republican, those two senators were Republican, ran to their aid. It infuriated the people of Wyoming. And so what they, what they, uh, uh, what they wanted to do is they wanted to put off the trial so it wouldn't be so much in the public mind. Didn't matter. Uh, a total landslide in 1892. Every office that was open went to the Democrats. Uh, the Republicans, as much as they could, uh, the people could do it, because some officers weren't up, threw the, threw the rascals out. The, the problem, though, after that is that you still had uh, a case that, because of various shenanigans, rulings by judges, some of the stuff that I go back and I reread the, the book, and the one thing that shocks me more than anything is the complete uh, hijacking of the, the judicial system. These men got away with murder. They, they were tried in 1893 in, in uh, uh, Cheyenne, uh, and at that time they couldn't seat a jury. And that was mostly because of a ruling, of, I think a very bad ruling by a judge, saying that uh, you had to try all the men together, which meant that you had an enormous number of challenges, which meant that you could never seat a jury. Had to let them all go. Well, I started writing a, a series of books on uh, uh, legal history starting in 1993, uh, and I became very much interested in some of these, they were sensational events, that resulted in trials. Uh, I'm, I'm a attorney. I've tried a lot of cases and, and I'm interested in things that, 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 that made history. In this case, there, were, there, were once, there was one major trial after another, starting with this one, that, that changed the legal landscape and completely, finally, after a Herculean effort, snuffed out this, this horrible culture of vigilantism that had grown up in, in Wyoming. Uh, there was this, what I mentioned in the uh, 1892 trial here. Uh, there was a 1902 trial of Tom Horn sensational trial. I've just finished a, a book about that. There was a 1909 trial having to do with sheep raids. Those snuffed out the continuing attempts on the part of, of cattlemen uh, to enforce their will by, by thuggery, by terrorizing people, by killing people. And finally at the end of it in 1909, uh, they'd pretty much finished the job and Wyoming was able to uh, uh, take its place with a, uh, the states that are sort of a true democracy. You really can't say you got a true democracy when the ultimate authority is the man with a gun over there. The state of Wyoming has always been Republican. It's a conservative state. They're, they're comfortable with Republicans, but boy, did they watch them closely. Uh, they were never again let uh, rich men get away with that kind of thing. And as I mentioned in the book, uh, Wyoming has this long tradition of spit in your eye uh, independence. They, they just weren't going to put up with uh, uh, the kind of nonsense the, that had happened then.